Right, so let's take a look at this then and see what we've got. Um, so I'm going to separate it from the backing paper now. So I can I be quite careful with this because what I don't want to do is obviously rip the paper. Uh, so if I, I do with masking tape, it should come off quite cleanly, but you know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Seems the longer you leave this stuff on, the worse it gets. So I've had before I've been using it for painting and it's been fine, but then as soon as you've left it a while, it just pulls all the paint off the wall. Uh, that probably is probably is intentional. I'm now covered in fiberglass dust as well. Uh, I should probably say this at this point is I'm doing a public video. Do wear uh, protection and do take care of yourselves. Uh, obviously, I'm sat here in a full hazmat suit, so. Uh, cool, right, that looks okay. Right, uh, actually, that is. I'm going to have to hoover it here, actually. That is. That is covered in. Yeah, that's covered in stuff. Right, okay. So, we, we, we said actually that it's looking dimensionally correct uh, for the board, so the board does fit that way and that way, which is good. Uh, and I've got this outline around here mainly so that when I when I put this down like this, because what I'm going to do later is I'm going to stick this down like that in that position, and then basically use an iron to transfer the uh, to transfer that toner. So it's uh, apparently it's a bit of an art again. So the idea is you need to get the iron hot enough to transfer it, but not so high it starts smudging it or smearing it. So there is apparently a bit of an art to it, but that's fine. But there's no point of doing that unless this thing actually does, uh, is dimensionally correct for the components. So I'm just going to go into my magic drawers and I've got some of the connectors we're going to be using. So the idea should be that this should fit all these pins. So they should all be 0 0.1 inch apart, which it looks like that fits really well actually. So it's funny, these things always seem smaller than I remember. Um, it's funny, the, obviously it all fits on the board, I've used these many times, but um, they they do seem a lot smaller. So the idea basically being is we'll drill a hole in all of these and there's a lot of holes to drill on here. So this is the flip side, is that yes, it'd be quicker to uh, get all this detail down, it'd be quicker to get the circuits down, but I've got to drill all these holes. And these ones here, these are, um, well, I've got a special code here, which I probably can't remember how to decipher, but these these are the IDC connectors, uh, boxed housing, right angle, and 16 way male. So this is a row of eight by eight. There you go, I can decipher my own code. Uh, so this one will be the same. It will be a boxed header, right angle, 20 male. Um, to be honest, I normally end up just remembering where these are by position, but I've got a whole box over there of these sort of bits and bobs. Um, right, anyway, where were we? So yeah, so that looks to be looking good. So what I want to do is just check it in various places because if the paper's gone through slightly twisted, it could mean then these are slightly off. Um, so they're looking okay. Those, so these ones up here, these are 16 way. The ones down here are 20 way. So I'll just check those off as well. And uh, these are looking okay. <laughs> what I'll be amazingly, what I will be surprised at is if I end up drilling all these holes right. Uh, these really are tiny. Um, I mean, no tiny than I should know they are, but they, they do look a lot smaller than I remember. Um, what I've got here is a, a set of uh, carbide, tungsten carbide, I think. Um, I'll probably put a correction on the video if that's wrong, which it probably is. Um, and these are the drill bits. Now, if you don't like densest, you probably won't want to see me use these bits later on. Uh, but the idea is I'll be drilling a hole through each one of these individual points, and that is going to be precision work. Uh, that is smaller than I imagined. Um, but hey, okay, we'll, we'll just get on to it. Uh, what I've heard, I'm gonna save this for later, but what I've heard you can do is actually centre punch each of these holes just to stop the drill walking about a bit. Um, but we'll, we'll come to that in a later video because that's, that's gonna take forever. Let's not think about that for a moment. I am a bit worried about these tracks though. They, they are quite thin. Uh, yeah, all right, well, let's just transfer them, see what we get. Um, Okay, yeah, well, let's do that. So I'm going to do this in the kitchen. Now, our kitchen is uh, is definitely in need of modernisation. So if I destroy it with the work I'm doing, we're not going to be too rude. Uh, admittedly, I've got to prepare food there, but a few chemicals on the on the worktop won't won't, uh, won't worry us too much. Okay, let's let's go let's go down to the kitchen. Right. Okay. Here we are in the kitchen. Um, yeah, I think the lighting's okay. Uh, we'll soon find out. Right. So. Uh, <laughs> this is a work kitchen, so there's a kettle, there's some tea and things. Uh, 
not going to make you a drink because obviously you're all virtual people. Um, so the first thing I need to do is clean the board. So if I was to um, transfer the image to this now, it likely wouldn't stick. And the thing is, copper tarnishes quite easily as well, so that's already quite tarnished. So what I need to do is use wire wool. Oh, I hate the feel of wire wool. I really don't like it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to don a glove at this point. The other reason why is once I've given it a quick wire wooling and got it all nice and shiny, uh, I'm also going to use acetone to give it another clean. Uh, now, I have to be careful with this because acetone will also melt the... Um, melt the toner. Um, now that'll come in useful later on because when we need to take the acid when we need to set the toner back off the board, it'll be acetone that we'll use. Uh, so I'll bit acetone will clean the board down quite nicely. So right, let's get going. You can still see what I'm doing, can't you? Yeah you can. Brilliant. Okay. So I'm just giving it a, a very quick polish for this and already you can see it's coming up quite nicely. Now interestingly as soon as I as soon as I finish doing this, what it'll do is it'll immediately start tarnishing again, um, but only by a small amount. The, the longer you leave it, eventually it'll go back to being that door sort of colour again. Um, so let's just give that a nice. And I have heard you can't go too far with this. The the better you the better you make it, the better it all it all stick on. Just we've been doing uh, some outdoors recently in here as well, and uh, so we've been getting through quite a bit of wire wool. It's been uh, what do you call it? There is a name for what we've been doing to the doors. I mean, you open and shut doors, but we've been oiling them. We've been oiling the doors. Uh, so the idea is that you oil them, you uh, you then get the wire wool out, you rub them down and you oil them again. You just keep on doing that until you've had enough, until the door's had enough. Uh, I hate repetitive tasks, which is the whole reason why I'm doing this thing, because I'm just sick, sick to death of doing those boards by hand. Well, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how much quicker this is. I guess the idea is once I've done it a while, they'll all go better at it. So. Uh, yeah, that's quite nice. I don't know if you can see the shine on there, but that, that does make quite a difference. I've got most of the marks out of it. Um, and of course now I've just got wire, bits of wire wool everywhere now, so that's something else to worry about. Right, okay, I'll do quite nicely. Right, you can go there. And I'll no doubt be finding iron fire, um, yeah, iron filings in my tea now for the next couple of days, but... Um, Again, warning, don't do this sort of thing in your kitchen. It's probably not the best place to be doing it. I'm just an idiot. Um, right, okay, so let's acetone that down a bit. Uh, so this is 100% pure acetone, uh, and it does need to be acetone. You can, I mean, effectively it's nail polish remover, but it does need to be acetone. Uh, you can get some like acetone-free things. That obviously isn't acetone, it's not going to do the job. Um, you can get some that are like mixtures. Uh, this wasn't particularly expensive, actually. I think maybe um, sort of five, six pounds, something like that, for all that. Um, there you go, that's lovely. And that's just getting rid of any grease. Uh, it's also making the board very cold as well. Um, you scientists out there will know why, I'm quite sure. Um, you can see there, there's quite a bit of muck come off there as well, which is quite good. That's mainly the, the filings. Um, from this point on, I've got to make sure I don't touch that board now, because I've got grease all over my fingers. That's what my fingers do, and uh, that will uh, stop this print from transferring. So again, just giving that a nice little look. Okay. It's actually quite a nice smell, actually. Um, I'm not sure it's for everybody, but I quite like it. Uh, right, okay, I think that's going to do it. I think that should be enough. Uh, so these can go in the bin. Uh, that's highly flammable as well, that stuff. Uh, well, at least, yeah, pretty sure it is. Yeah, highly flammable. Yeah, so don't uh, don't set fire to it or put somewhere where it will get it will get caught fire. Yeah, whatever. Right. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, try and mop up a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm going to put the print down first. Um, I'm going to take my glove off, so I don't need that anymore. Um, I don't think there's any muck on that, but I'm just going to give it a light wipe just in case. Because again, anything that gets in the way is going to stop it transferring. Uh, and I really want to make sure I get a good transfer. Okay, that's looking... I think that's looking fine, let's just go for it. There's only so many times we can check whether we're doing it right. Now, I've got a horrible feeling for the, the register cards that I'll be doing, that they're going to need to be double-sided. So actually, although I've been placed that quite carefully, it doesn't matter too much if it's not in exactly the right place, because uh, as long as it's all correct, 
by itself, it'll be fine. Um, when you do double-sided, of course, then it really is important to get the, the image on this side perfectly lined up with the image on the other side, otherwise when you drill your vias or the holes through it, uh, they aren't going to match. Um, so that's, that's really important. Um, right, sticking that down that side. What I need to make sure is that once this is stuck down, it stays stuck down and doesn't move around, because again, once I'm going over it with the iron, uh, it is, if it starts moving around, you're going to get a blurred image and it just isn't going to work. Um, now what's interesting with this, I'm expecting there might be some broken tracks afterwards, it might be a bit fiddly, but what we can do is we can actually repair some of those tracks with the uh, that Kino wire, Kino wire, I don't know how you pronounce it, uh, but what we can actually do is repair some tracks with those. So, um, so if there is one or two mistakes, I'm not going to throw the whole board away, and to be honest, this is never going to be a professional job, you know, it's, I'm not expecting it to come out absolutely perfect. Uh, this is a homemade board, uh, you know, if I wanted a professionally made board, I would get it done professionally. I, I think it worked out it's going to be about £80 to get a professional board. Um, interestingly, once you've bought one, it's like not much more money to buy like 10, it's, and then if you buy 20 and so on, but of course all these boards are completely unique, um, so once I've made them I, I don't need to make another one. Even the registered cards, although they're all very similar, they're not quite the same. Right, I think I'm happy with that. Uh, I think I'm going to stick the corners down just for good measure, because I've got a horrible feeling that if I don't, something bad might happen. Uh, I don't know what, maybe the end of the world. Uh, right, I'm going to stop trying to sort garbage in a minute. But I've not tried this format before, where normally I heavily edit these videos and I sort of do a, a voiceover track. It takes a lot of time, so I'm, this time I'm just going to try just rattling away, which is the real me. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I just prattle on, so uh, if you like this sort of thing, let me know, you know, sort of comments in there. Uh, otherwise I'll go back to doing it the other way. Right, I think that is ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that down there. So I want to iron on this side, because I want the heat to go straight into the toner onto the board. What will happen is the copper will get really hot because of course it'll still pick up all the heat. Um, but I think this gives me my best chance of, of getting the heat through. Uh, when I did the test one, I, I think I had one sheet on here. I think it was one sheet. Uh, so hopefully that'll work okay. Uh, we'll soon find out. Right. Now don't laugh at this. This is my iron. Now it's not far away, it's just very, very small. And this is a, I used to do a lot with the. I think they're called Fimo beads, it's not that, but you, you basically put those beads together and then you, you iron them together. Uh, and this is basically the iron I used for it. Uh, I think most of my clothes are non iron so I don't really bother with a, an iron for my clothes. Um, now, consequently, this is, this is a very small iron, so I'm going to have to move around quite a lot on here. I guess if I had a larger iron, uh, make sure it's not in the steam setting, uh, if I had a larger iron I could just swat it down and it should just do the job. <laughs> Now the question is here, how long to do this for? I don't know, uh, until it feels right. Uh, I think a lot of this is trial and error, so I'll, I'll do it for a while. Um, it, when it feels right, I'll just go for it. If it all messes up, I can just acetone the toner back off the board and have another go. And if that happens, I'll probably carry on tonight and I'll post this video um, beforehand. Uh, but we'll, we'll see. Right, I think that's up to temperature. Uh, so, uh, temperature-wise, uh, mustn't do steam iron because we're not trying to wet the thing. Uh, and really the hottest it'll go. And <laughs> now, I have a gadget here that's quite useful, which is my uh, temperature gauge. I did do that before and was very disappointed to find it was only registering, uh, if you can see that, 46 uh, degrees. And then touch the plate, uh, and no, it's because it's a shiny plate, so this doesn't pick it up properly. <laughs> if I actually get it from the side or something like that, uh, you get a bit more of a, a proper reading, which is like 75, 80, something like that. So yeah, that, that's hot, I'm not going to touch that. Um, I don't know what temperature should be, in theory you can find out from the toner manufacturer what temperature it fuses at, things like that, but again, a lot of this is trial and error, so we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, Right, let me just pause the video and I'll, I'll bring this back in a minute. All right, just wanted to do that as a, just wanted to take a quick video pause there. Also, I have a quick glass of water because I'm talking you all to death, but also just in case the video stopped, I didn't want to have to do all that again. Right, so let's do the ironing. So, um, I'm just going to start here. I'm just applying a, I don't know if I should move it as much. Uh, the videos I've seen online sort of show that you don't want to move it around too much because you don't want to smear the ink around. Uh, but I do need to make sure I get into all the corners. So I'm just lightly pressing it. 
I have seen some people use um, uh, what do you call them laminators to do this, uh, which sounds a uh, sounds quite a nice way of doing it actually. That's interesting. I'm hearing cracking noises. It's probably the shoe that's the metal, or it could be the iron. It's one or the other anyway. I must admit the, the test board I did that's in my blog is quite small and it was a different backing. Uh, so this is the um, the fiberglass backing where the other one was a phenolic board. So that might make a difference as well. Um, so I really have no idea how this is going to turn out. Uh, but like I say, if it's a disaster, we'll, we'll, we'll pause, I'll have a think and we'll, we'll get to another video again. That cracking's not nice though. I don't know what that is. I think what we'll do is I'll shut up for a second and I'll I'll just iron over this. We'll do a uh, we'll do a fast bit here. Yeah, the the, the board definitely is making cracking noises. I can't. I guess the copper would expand, perhaps on the board. No, that doesn't make sense. Don't know. I think we just have to wait and see what comes out of this. I think I'm going to say this is probably enough. I don't know if I've been in the corners enough, so I'm just going to go into those a bit more. I'm blocking my own light now, but uh, let's, let's go. And I'm just going to fast forward a bit again. Well, that does feel quite hot actually, so that's good. Um, Yeah, so I mean that's been at 60 degrees, so it must have been more when the iron was on it, so I think that's probably okay. Um, I can maybe have a little peaky underneath it and just see if it feels like it has a dead. Ooh, that is actually quite warm. Um, yeah, it looks like it's a deering. It's really difficult to tell. I mean, actually, if I look at it from this side, I can kind of see where it's, it's all sticking to the board and... Yeah, you won't really be able to see it, but I can kind of see like the ridges of where the, the paper is on the board, so it looks like it's quite well adhered. Um, to be honest, the only way to find out now, I think, is just to chuck it in. So I did kind of keep an idea of how long I've been ironing that for. Turn my iron off. Um, yeah, well, we'll see. Well, let's have a look at it. Uh, right, I'm going to uh, leave that to cool down for a second, and I'm going to fill the sink with water, because the next bit now is to soak this so that the paper peels off. Okay, so I'm working in a little bit of a dark corner of the kitchen here. Um, so I've, I've brought the exposure up a bit, so things might look a bit overblown and so on, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get by. Um, so this, this board's come down and feels reasonable temperature now. Uh, this isn't actually cold water, because what I don't want to do is just dump it in something that's going to change the temperature massively. Uh, so this is it's quite comfortable actually, it's certainly warmer than what it is outside at the moment. Uh, and I'm just going to uh, plop that in and just let that soak for a bit. So. The, uh, I need to get that washer sorted on that tap. Um, so the, what should happen in a short while is I'll kind of see the print starting to appear. And the idea of what should happen now is the paper will peel away from the toner, which now should have been better attracted to the copper than what it was to the paper. So the idea is it's let go of the paper. And this is where that, that magazine paper is really useful because it should let that toner go quite easily. Uh, now, if it hasn't, it's one of the few things either. It's not the right paper, which I know this paper's quite good actually. Um, we have to have another trip to IKEA at some point uh, for another catalogue. Um, it'll either be because I haven't timed enough or the board wasn't clean enough or this some other reason, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with this paper. Uh, you can use proper photo paper apparently, but it's quite thick. I think it's a little harder to uh, to get off in here. Um, so I'm just going to leave that for a while. Um, ooh, it's, I can already feel it wrinkling up actually, so that, that's, that's interesting. It's already going through, so um, I don't want to do it too early. Uh, what sometimes happens, I think the, the paper will peel off and leave like a bit of a, a film behind. So the, the tracks won't be absolutely black. Um, if you can hear something in the background, that's a boiler firing up, which is lovely. It's really getting quite cold in here. Um, where was I? That's worth being on. Right, let's have a, let's have a look at this. So I'm going to um, I'm gonna untape the back now very carefully. So I'm just. This is awful, this, because it really is the moment of truth thing. It's either going to be an absolute disaster or it's going to be or it's going to be all right. Or, and what I'm actually predicting is it'll be somewhere in between. It'll probably mostly be okay at probably missing at one of the edges, which is 
and if you saw my blog post that corner did uh, it wasn't quite covered in the corner and basically what I was just I haven't been haven't gone in properly with the iron enough all right bear with me a second I think I'll fast forward this bit again There we go. So, what I'm hoping now is, if I lift the board, it should just leave the uh, the paper behind. And what I'm hoping is, the paper doesn't have anything written on it other than something about IKEA kitchens. So, if I lift that up gently, it, oh, it's almost lifting off. I just want to leave that a little bit longer. I don't want to force it. Oh no, like see that hasn't transferred at all. Well, it has in places. So actually what's happened here is the, the iron just wasn't hot enough. Um, so that's disappointing. Um, let's have a look at the bit where it did work. So clearly what I've done is I've got some of the board is okay. But most of it isn't. So I'm just rubbing off some of the paper. Uh, well, that's fine, you know, I, I have a feeling that might happen. So it just hasn't got hot enough to transfer the toner, or I haven't pressed on enough, or something like that. Uh, but, uh, let's see, there you go, if you have a look there. So it's not in the top left-hand corner, but it's it's on the rest. Actually, where it has come out, it's not too bad. Um, let me just give this a dry off, and then what I'll do is I'll give you a bit of a closer inspection, just so you can see what it looks like. It, it's good, though, it's, pr it's promising, it would have come out all right. Let me, let me pause for a second. Here we go, so uh, focusing a bit nearer. Uh, so you can see over here it's actually starting to dry out, so we can see some of the paper fibres that are just showing up, but yeah, that's actually come out really nice over here. Yeah, that's come out quite well. So it just needed a bit more of a, a bit more iron. It's interesting, I've got it in one corner, but completely not in the other. Um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Oh well, not to worry. Um, we can have another go. So then I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll stop for tonight. Um, effectively what I need to do with this board now is I'll, I'll just rub it down with acetone um, and then just have another go, uh, another go tomorrow. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll pick up from the point where it, it comes out, because it's probably going to take me a few goes and you can imagine how it works. So basically once I've got a whole image of this on here I think we're ready for the next stage, which is the etching part. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, lesson learned, we'll move on. See you next time.